Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. In the last episode, we went about finishing the optimization of our code to build our Kamer database for classifying our 16S rRNA gene sequences using the naive Bayesian classifier from Wang et al. If that's all just gobbledygook and doesn't make any sense to you, that's fine. That's fine. Really, it's fine. Feel free to go back to previous episodes in this series to kind of get a handle on what we're doing. But really what's most important about this series of episodes is showing you how I think through problems as I try to develop my very first R package and thinking about things related to software engineering, test-driven development, benchmarking, and putting it all to use to hopefully solve an interesting problem to at least a few of you. I know it's interesting to me. Anyway, in today's episode, what we're going to do is we are going to start looking at how we can classify individual sequences using that database, using this naive Bayesian approach. We're not going to get all the way there in today's episode, but we're going to get a good chunk of the way. Hopefully we can generate those bootstrap replicates as well as classifying those bootstrap replicates. And in the future episode, we'll go about getting a consensus taxonomy from a large number of bootstrap replicates. So I was at a meeting yesterday and I was thoroughly bored by the meeting. <laughs> so I figured I would jot down on a notepad what I need to do next to go ahead and classify a sequence. Uh, again, when I have a big problem that I'm trying to solve and I wanna break down into small parts, I find that it's very helpful to manually write out the different steps. And so here I have my retro Mo Bio Laboratories notepad, um, saving you time for life. Well, at least as long as Mo Bio lasted, right? I think they're owned by Kaijin now. Anyway, so the first step that we need to do is to take our unknown sequence and extract the Kamers from that. Um, I realize now as I'm saying this, I will also need to convert my unknown sequence from ATs, Gs, and Cs to 0, 1, 2, and 3. Again, that will put it into base 4 uh, and then allow us to get our numerical kamers and indices out of that. And so then for my sequence, I'll have a list of indices and I will then want to bootstrap sample kamers from that vector of values. The bootstrap sample is going to be 1 divided by the length of the number of, or the length of the kamer, right? And so if we're using uh, kamers of 8, then I'm going to use one eighth of the Kamer indices to go into my next step, okay? And so that one eighth was described in the Wang et al. paper uh, here in the methods section as a way to make sure that uh, we have kind of non-overlapping Kamers. It's probably not perfect, uh, but it works. Also, when I talk to statisticians, this is the step that gives them the willies that they don't really get, <laughs> that it seems weird to them, but again, it works. All right, so we're gonna take a sample of kamers, in our case, say one eighth, if we're using eight letter kamers, and then using that subset, we'll then compare it to our database. In our database then, again, our rows are our kamers and the columns are the different genera. And so then what we can get is a sub matrix from our overall matrix. And then we can basically multiply all of the probabilities together and then find the genus that gives us the highest probability. So that whole process, the bootstrapping and the classification is obviously highly sensitive to a random number generator. And so we're going to repeat this some large number of times. So by default, uh, tools like Mother and the original RDP used 100 times. And so we'll, we'll try that. <laughs> um, and again, by doing it a large number of times, we remove some of that sensitivity to the random number generator. Generally, we like to do these types of things a thousand times, but in the past implementations, this step has been kind of slow, and so typically we've only done it, say, a hundred times. The more times you do it, the greater precision you're going to get on the consensus classification. So again, that whole loop will work for one sequence. We then would want to do it for all of the sequences in our data set. So before I get going too far, I want to go ahead and uh, run my tests, make sure they all pass. That is good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the check. I realized I forgot to do the check before the last episode. Um, and so we'll see if this goes through okay. So this is giving me an error. Um, that namespace dependency missing from description uh, entries string i. So you'll recall that if we look at our R script um, with our um, individual functions in our kamers.r script, 
I used import from uh, string i, and I think further down also I used a stats um, function, na omit. And so I've got those in this description, and my understanding is that that gets into the namespace, right, where we're importing these different functions from these packages. I don't know why it doesn't also update the description, but if we look at the description, we see that nothing is there. So we wanna go ahead and load those packages into our namespace. And so one of the things we might wanna know is the version of the package that we're using. And so one way to get that would be to do session info. Um, and I've seen session underscore info. There's also uh, session uppercase info without the underspace, underscore. Um, I kind of like this underscore version. Um, it's a little bit nicer, and I think it's actually going to give the version that I want, right? So if I look through here, um, I actually don't see stats or string i. Oh, there is string i. Um, let's see. Does it have stats? That doesn't have stats, but down here we see that there are stats, but it doesn't give the version number, right? Um, if I were to do package version with stats, I get 4.4.0. It's a base package, so I think it's going to match the version of R that I'm using. So because I've already got dev tools with use this loaded, uh, when I start R Studio, I'm gonna go ahead and do use underscore package, and then I can give the name of the package and the min version. So the package I'll do will be stats, and then the min version, and I'll say 4.4.0. Um, I feel like maybe I should go back to 4.0, but I've tested it on 4.4, so I'm gonna roll with that. So, okay, so it says adding stats to imports in description. So now if we look at description, we see we've got imports, right? And so we want to set a minimum, not a actual, right? Um, because somebody might come along a year from now and they might be up to 4.4.3 um, and they'll wanna know that, well, if you have stats 4.4, you're good to go. Okay, so now we need to repeat this but for string i, all right? And so now we need the package version for string i, and we'll do package version string i. So I've got 1.8.3, which I now see up here matches uh, what I have for string i. Don't know why these aren't alphabetized, or I don't know what order these are in, but whatever, 1.8.3. And so we'll again do use package string i, and then min version equals 1.8.3. Um, maybe I'll do 1.8.0 um, because the 0.3 is the patch, whereas the 0.8 is a minor release. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, that's added it to the imports section. And so now again, if we look at our imports, we've got that. I think we'll be good to go now. So let's go ahead and do check. And that passed with flying colors, no errors, warnings, or notes. So I'm happy about that. And so now <laughs> we're ready to get with the business that we are thinking about today. Um, I'm gonna go to my benchmarking directory and open up vignette.r. This is kind of my working document for how I might interact with these tools, right? And so as you can see from here, we're getting in the, the taxonomic data, the sequence data. From the sequence data, we're parsing apart the names as well as the sequences in lines 10 through 13. And then we joined together the sequence data and the taxonomy data to make sure that the information is in the correct order. And then we pass that to Kamer database, right? And so I could imagine calling this like DB um, for my Kamer database, and maybe I'll put these arguments on separate lines so they're not uh, totally uh, going off the side of the screen, kind of like I have up here with these really long paths, whatever. So I might imagine having like um, unknown seek, right? Uh, and then I have something, right? So ATGC, ATGC, right? Something like that. And then I could imagine doing classify sequence, and I could then give it my unknown equals unknown uh, sequence, and my database equals DB, right? And then I would get some type of output from that, okay? And so again, what I'm trying to do ultimately here is build classify sequence. But as we saw from up here with build Kamer database, there's a lot going on there, right? And so my build Kamer database actually was up here and used a fair number of steps to get to 
generating the database. And so I fully expect that classifying is gonna take a handful of functions as well. And I'm gonna to try to develop that as well using test-driven development. So one thing I'm feeling a little bit uneasy about is I'm putting all of my code, all of my functions into one script. I've got this kmers.r script. Generally, the practice is to put different user-facing functions into different scripts. And so I could imagine having this build kmer database be in uh, build database.r. And I could imagine having classify in classify.r or something like that. And then all of the other code could be in a separate uh, script for like utilities or something like that. But I'm still kind of waiting for things to kind of shake out in logic and structure of our code before I kind of split things apart. Again, this is where I'm thinking of going, um, where we're gonna have an unknown sequence and that we're gonna feed into something like classify sequence with our database and out pop a classification. I come back to this flow diagram, and so we're gonna to wanna to extract the kmers from the unknown, which is not unlike what we did when building the database, right? So again, if you think about this first function, um, we have, after processing the genera, we then convert our sequences to base four, and then we basically detect the kmers across all the sequences. Detected kmers is a list that has um, each sequence in a different slot, and then each slot is a vector containing the kmer indices for that size kmer, which again, by default was eight for each of those sequences, okay? And so what I'm thinking is if we imagine having one sequence that we wanna classify, then we very well might want to put the seek to base four inside of a function that would be something like getting out the kmers, right? And so if we come down um, to here, we had detect kmers, right? Where we have our sequence, we get all of the kmers from the sequence for that kmer size, and we then convert it to indices. I think what I'd like to do is have detect kmers receive the A, T, G, and C sequence, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the code that I had up here um, where I'm doing seek to base four. I'll go ahead and cut that out and bring this up a line. And then here, I'll go ahead and put in sequences into that and um, come back down to my detect kmers here, right? And then we have our seek to base four on our sequences. And I think we can kind of maybe trim down this code a bit. So I'll go ahead and turn this into a pipeline and the detect all kmers will um, get the input from seek to base four, and then the base four to index uh, will get the input as well um, from up above, right? And then we should be able to remove that return statement uh, because the function will return the last computed value. To test this out and make sure that it doesn't totally break my tests, I'm gonna go ahead back to my test script and where I had uh, detect kmers, um, I'm gonna have this here, right? And so I'm a little bit worried that this sequence, because it's not in A, T's and G's and C's, is gonna cause problems. So let's, again, we wanna run this. So I'm gonna say this is sequences. Uh, and actually this should be sequence, not sequences, right? Because this is sequence. And at this point we're in, working with individual sequences, whereas um, detect cameras across sequences looks across all the sequences. This is detecting from a single sequence, right? And so we can then go ahead and get this. And we can then, um, if we go ahead and load this, then if we do detect cameras, on sequence, this returns nothing. <laughs> so let's see what's happening. Again, seek to base four. Yeah, it's turning all those numbers into ends because if we look at seek to base four, um, yeah, what it's doing is it's looking for a pattern and if it's not an A, C, G, or T, it's turning it into an N. Okay, so that's easy enough to solve. So let's come back up here where we have the actual sequence that I had converted into base four. All right, um, and so we come down here and I can plop that in. And then here, I'll plop this in here, but leave this terminal N. And we're gonna have the same thing here. Go ahead and save that. Um, and let's go ahead and test this. 
So that fails. Um, so let's go ahead and um, reload our package here. So seek to base four on sequence, right, is still the number. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that loaded. And then if I do a seek to base four, that converts it to base four, as we saw. And again, what we want is detect kmers. Um, and so then if we get all kmers on that, kmer size not, okay, well, let's go ahead and set that. And then uh, run this, that gets us our eight mers. And then this gets us our index values. Okay, so what's going on? Um, let's see. So if we do sequence, uh, so this is gonna complain. <laughs> our, our, our Basically what's wrong is that our detected and our indices are different, right? So our detected is correct, but our indices is wrong because our sequence was um, previously in base four and now it's in um, uh, ATs, Gs, and Cs for generating the expected, right? So I'll go ahead and do to base four on sequence and pipe that into get all kmers. All right. So now if we look at kmers, that works. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and save and test. That's still upset. So now if we look at line 97, it's complaining. And that's because, again, uh, I need to propagate this down for the other uh, test situations. All right, so I'll go ahead and pop that down here, but I want kmer size equals seven, indices, great. And so let's go ahead and save and test. Well, I think we're gaining on it, but we still have some errors here, right? Um, and so uh, again, this is modifying our tests to work with our, our code, right? All right, so the other problem we're having then is up here, we've got these other sequences. And so I think I probably had that defined up here, right? And so that's gonna be this uh, up to the A. Uh, so I'll come back here and in here I'll put that in. And then here, this last one is going to be a C uh, rather than an A, because again, if we looked at our digits here, um, the last one is a one, and so we went a, C, G, T, we went in alphabetical order, right? All right, so that should work. And then let's come down and see if there's others, right? So here's another uh, situation like that. So I'll go ahead and copy these over. All right, and there. And we'll do the same thing here, right? Okay, we're getting there. I know this is taking a little while, but this is how it goes. All right. And I think we're good. Okay, so I'm going to save and test. Ah, we have one fail. Um, and let's see, where is that? Detect matrix on line 124. Let's see, camera size three, sequences, um, and then our expected, so then our expected uh, is coming back as zeros. So our base four to index is having a problem. So let's look at that. That hadn't been a problem in the past. Um, and so here we're taking our base four string uh, and then converting that to a numeric. And so let's look at our test. And so again, sequences uh, one is that, and our kmer size is this, it's three, right? And so then get all kmers is returning those. Ah, so again, this is in our sequence space rather than our base four space. And so again, this comes to a problem with our test, not our code. And so what I will then do is base four sequences as uh, str or seek to base four on sequences. And so then that converts them. And then I will give this as the argument here. Now let's save and test. Passes. Wonderful. All that. <laughs> ah. So what does all that get us? Well, now if we have a unknown sequence that's in ATs, Gs, and Cs, we can then detect the kmers, right? So I could have like, um, say X is ATGC, 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 and then I could do detect kmers on X, and it returns those, um, I think they're eight mers, right? Or I could do kmer size equals three, 
and I'll get those k-mers, okay? And so why that's important is that that's going to be that first step in our pipeline. And again, we're reusing other tools that we already have, right? And so again, if I think back to my vignette here, if I, if I comment that out, I could go ahead and do detect uh, k-mers on unknown, right? So x equals unknown uh, with like my k-mer size, um, right? So that's gonna be the first step. We already have that tested as we have seen, right? Uh, we went through all that refactoring to get that to work. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and sample this group of k-mers. So we're gonna to wanna to create a test. So I'll say test that. Um, and then we'll say bootstrap sample one over k-mer size of uh, k-mers from unknowns, right, okay. And so I'm gonna create a vector of k-mers. And so I will i don't need to use these particular ones. I can use um, kind of a, just a set, <laughs> right? And so what I will do is let's say our k-mers is uh, one to 100, okay? And so that then means that our k-mers are one to 100. And if my k-mer size is eight, then our expected n k-mers, basically one divided by eight times 100. Um, but if we do that, then our expected n k-mers is gonna be a fractional value, okay? And so I would like to convert that to an integer. So I'll say as dot integer on that. And now my expected n k-mers is 12, right? So we'll create a function that I'll call bootstrap k-mers, and we'll give that our k-mers and our k-mer size, and yeah. And so we'll then call this detected, right? So we will also want our detected to be a subset of the k-mers, right? So we have, we have two things we're testing, right? So we'll say expect length, uh, length, right? And then we're gonna give it the object, so that'll be detected, and the expected length, which would be expected and k-mers. We'll also expect in, and so expect in, um, let's see if it gives us the pop-up, uh, does the code return a vector containing the expected value? So there's a variety of different approaches. So tests that every element of x is in y, right? Um, if you do contains that every, x contains every element of y, and so that y is a subset of x, um, which is not what we want. We want x to be a subset of y, okay? And so we'll expect in uh, detected in kmers, okay? And so um, this will work. Um, I'm a little bit reluctant to describe specific kmers that I want to get out because uh, this is going to use a random number generator. And I guess I could give out specific values, but it's gonna be really sensitive to the seed of the random number generator. And so uh, we know we're gonna get kind of wrong values, right? Um, so let's hold off on that for now and kind of look at these properties of the kmers that we expect to get out rather than the specific kmers that we're looking to get out. So if we go ahead and save this and test, it's going to fail, right? And it fails because could not find function bootstrap kmers. So we'll go ahead and grab this uh, function definition. We'll go ahead and create our no rd header. And then we've got our function definition here. Uh, function on kmers. Kmer size by default we'll say is eight. Uh, and we'll go ahead with that. And so again, what we're gonna be taking in is kmers and we want a subset of those. If we think about kmers um, as being like this collection of uh, 100 values. And so we're gonna wanna use sample to get a random sampling of those k-mers. And the number we're gonna wanna draw is n k-mers. And we'll then uh, want to sample this using replace equals true because a, a bootstrap sampling is sampling with replacement, okay? And so the n k-mers should be k-mers divided by k-mer size and then for this, we'll do as.integer on that. 
And yeah, that should work. So again, if we do end kmers, uh, this should be kmers, right? Okay. And then sample that. So let's see what end kmers is. Ah, that's not what I wanted. Ah, so kmers is the vector. What I want is the length of the kmers. So do length on kmers. Good. That then gets us our 12. So uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. Okay, so that's our 12 values. Cool. Um, if we save and test, that passes. So one thing I'm not testing for here, and I feel okay about not testing for, is what it does with duplicates. The 8 was chosen for the kmers because it's very unlikely to have the same 8mer uh, multiple times in the same sequence. And so I'm not going to be so worried uh, that it gets that wrong or does something struggles basically with having duplicate values here in the vector. So I'm not going to worry about uniquing this. I suppose if I wanted to do something, I could do like unique on that. Um, and then actually that would possibly fail the test under some circumstances because if there's a duplicate, then it would remove that duplicate and we'd actually get fewer um, out than we anticipated. So I'm going to go ahead and leave out that unique. Uh, and so that is passed and we have the test and all is good. Um, so again, thinking back to our vignette, we could then imagine doing like bootstrap uh, kmers, right? Um, and, and again, our kmers and our kmer size were the arguments. And so then our kmers uh, would be coming out of here, right? Our detect kmers. And so then our kmer size uh, is eight, as we know, right? I'll then call this BS for that. <laughs> uh, don't read too much into that BS. Now we want to classify that bootstrap. So we'll then do classify underscore BS with the BS. And then we'll also want to give that our database, right? And so that will be DB. So we now need to write that test, right? So we'll go ahead and make a test. So we'll say test that, and then we'll say um, classify bootstrap sample works and we'll go ahead and add in our curly braces um, as well as that and so what we're going to use for our database I'm gonna go ahead and drag this stuff down so I'll copy and paste it not very dry um, at some point we'll see how we can dry out so to speak our test code um, and so these are gonna be three sequences and one concern I have is that these are pretty short. Uh, and so if we have sequences that are eight nucleotides along and our camera size is three, that's gonna be eight divided by three, which is like two, <laughs> right? Um, so this may or may not work very effectively. We'll just have to see. Um, so what we'll get for our DB from this then um, is this, right? Where we've got our 64 camers the probabilities for our two genera, right? I'm gonna grab a sequence from our second uh, genera, right? Second genus, <laughs> I guess that's what they're called. And I'll call this unknown on that. And maybe what I'll do instead of um, worrying about classifying the bootstrap sample is classifying this. And that will perhaps get me something a little bit more reliable because these sequences only differ at one position, which is this last position, right? So I will go ahead and then do get kmers uh, out of this sequence. And let's make sure that works. And of course it's detect kmers, not get. All right, cool. And so that is an eight mer, but I want the three mer. So I have to give this then kmer size all right, cool. So now we've got those, and these are my unknown kmers. And so now we wanna classify my unknown kmers against the database. And so what I'm expecting the uh, class of expected classification to be, uh, to be B. So we'll then say um, this is detected classification, right? And then we can then do expect equal, uh, and then we'll have detected and the expected, right? 
So again, it will save and test and it'll fail because it doesn't know classify BS. So I'll go ahead and save that. And then we'll come down here. And again, we'll go ahead and make, um, again, no RD because we're not wanting this to be user facing. Pop in our definition function on that. All right. And then, um, so we have our unknown kmers and the database. So again, if I have my unknown, I've got those kmers and I've got my DB. This is uh, a list with two values, right? So I've got my conditional probability and my genera. And so what I'm thinking about here would be DB conditional probability looks like this. This is a, a matrix, right? And then I have my unknown kmers. Uh, which it doesn't know. <laughs> so I think unknown kmers are unknown, right? Let's try that again. Cool. So it's those um, six kmers. And so what I could do is go ahead and take that, pop it in here, and then this returns um, not exactly what I want uh, because this should be rows and column. So now what I get are the rows and the two columns uh, each column for the two different genera, right? And so what I'd like to do then is for each column, I need to calculate the product across all of the observed kmers. And so we can do that with the prod function. So we can take apply. Uh, and so the apply function will take a data frame or a matrix and it'll apply a function across either the rows or the columns. So the arguments are the matrix or the data frame comma, and then the margin, and then the function. And so the function then is prod. And so if I do like prod uh, one colon four, that should be one times two times three times four. So two times three is six times four, 24. 24, cool, right? And so this will then give us the product across all of these probabilities. And so the margin then is either the row or the column. So if we wanna go across rows, then it's one, and if it's across columns, we want two. So I think we want two. And so that gets us the column products. We then get the probabilities that our sequence was generated by either genus one or genus two. The paper points out that we don't care about these actual probabilities. We're more concerned with the maximum probability, right? And so now what I can say is that these are our probabilities, right? And then what we want is the maximum. So there's a function called which max on probabilities. And this then returns two. We could then plug that into db dollar sign genera. I'm gonna hold off because what I'm realizing is that I wanna hold off on using string variables as long as possible because ultimately we're probably gonna wanna use that string variable to make comparisons between things. And I'd rather keep things as indices as long as possible. So you'll recall that back up here in our build kmer database, we had the genera indices, right? And so this is a mapping between our uh, genera <laughs> and the number, right? So the names as well as the index. And so I'm gonna return the number, which means I need to come back here to my tests. And instead of making it B, it needs to be two, right? Because this is, it's gonna be sorted alphabetically when it defines um, those values, those indices. And so B is gonna be in slot two. So I'll go ahead and save and test, cross my fingers, hope for the best. What do you know? Miracles happen, that passed. <laughs> cool. Um, and I imagine we could do kind of the same type of thing with these other parameters, but um, I think that's gonna be good. And so now we have done this second step, right? Where we have classified the bootstrap. So we'll then do BS class and we'll be in good shape there. This leaves us at a good break point to go forward in the next episode to think about how we can go ahead and get a consensus taxonomy for those bootstrap replicates. So that you don't miss that episode, please, please, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.